In chapter 13.2, we're going to talk about some physical means of killing microbes. Uh, these physical means, uh, just to note, they do not involve chemicals. So this is things like using temperature or pressure or filtration, which is something that's um, uh, very interesting to do, or things like irradiation. These are methods for uh, destroying microbes using those no chemical means involved. One of the most common pieces of equipment in uh, medical and research fields is the autoclave. So an autoclave is a pressure vessel that uh, heats up to high temperature. So the pressure part of it is important because uh, as pressure rises, so as pressure goes up, the boiling point of liquids goes up. So if you want to sterilize a liquid, boiling it at 100 degrees C um, doesn't fully work. There are many spores that can resist 100 degrees C. And your liquid boils off. So if I wanted to create a liquid growth medium, uh, it's no good boiling it because then it boils off. So what an autoclave does is it raises the pressure and it raises the pressure to a point where the boiling point of liquids also goes up. That boiling point um, is uh, raised so we can heat the liquid to 121 degrees C. Um, and if you do that for around 20 minutes, this will completely sterilize whatever is in there. You can also... Uh, do this uh, with other things like instruments, uh, metal things, but autoclaves, because they're high uh, heat, they can't do certain plastics. So only some plastics are autoclave safe. Um, it uh, depends. And there's all kinds of stories. People accidentally put the wrong plastic in the autoclave and it melts and it gets all over the place and it sucks. Um, so uh, autoclaves are one means. They don't always work for everything, though. This whole system is somewhat similar to uh, the canning process uh, with a pressure cooker where things are canned under pressure, um, but it's just a, a stronger implementation of that. Some substances would be ruined by autoclaving. Um, so the process of pasteurization was invented by Louis Pasteur in 1864. And this was designed to kill, at least to reduce the number of uh, microbes that cause spoilage in uh, fermenting beer and wine. So one of Pasteur's um, great applications of his work was to the French wine industry. Um, and the goal of this was to uh, reduce these microbial numbers without affecting the texture, the color, or the taste of whatever it was uh, being pasteurized. So pasteurization involves moderately high heat for a very short amount of time, um, usually without that pressure applied, and then a cooling step. Pasteurization is most often used on milk, um, and it can be uh, used to reduce bacterial numbers. Um, it heats it up, hopefully, to kill most of one of our most heat-resistant pathogens, Coxiella brunettii, which can cause Q fever. Um, so that is the process, but it is not sterilization. Uh, it is reducing the bacterial number. And in this case, there can be up to 20,000 bacteria per milliliter, which is a rather low number, um, but uh, there are still living bacteria in whatever's being pasteurized. It's just enough to reduce their numbers down to that level. And in the process, it should not affect the texture, the color, or the taste, uh, which is important. We have methods of um, reducing microbial growth. These don't necessarily kill microbes, but they restrict their growth. Uh, cold is one such method. Refrigeration is something you're probably familiar with. Um, 4 to 8 degrees C, which is around 39 to 43 C, is used for food preservation because most pathogens like mesophilic conditions, which is human body temperature, 37 degrees C. When you lower them to around 4 degrees C, they stop growing. Uh, we have talked, though, about the exception that is listeria, which can grow at this low temperature. So listeria is a common uh, foodborne pathogen because it can grow at these low temperatures. 
Sometimes uh, researchers want to store microbes. There are a couple of ways that they can do this. Bacterial cultures can be frozen for long periods of time. You mix bacterial culture with uh, the substance called glycerol, which basically helps prevent the cells from bursting when they freeze. And you can freeze them at like minus 70 or minus 80 uh, for long periods of time. So researchers who work on microbes uh, have these storage stocks of microbes that they can keep for long, long periods of time. It basically puts them into suspended animation. There's also techniques for freeze drying bacterial cultures called lyophilization. Um, they're quick frozen in a vacuum at low temperatures and that basically pulls all the water out of them. Uh, this is how we actually have been getting our bacterial samples that I use in the lab for us. Um, they come as these uh, freeze dried powders and I add liquid medium back to them and they all come back to life for us. So uh, we have ways of reducing bacterial growth and then basically halting growth, but not killing the organism in here. Some things are very heat sensitive. Uh, chemical solutions, uh, things like antibiotics and stuff like this. Um, things, some things can't be autoclaved. So one way to deal with liquids that can't be autoclaved is to filter them. And filtration, uh, depending on the size, will remove different things. So for bacteria, uh, yeasts, molds, algae, protozoa, a 0.2 micron filter will remove most of these things. But viruses are much smaller. So viruses will not be removed by a 0.2 micron filter. Um, most common uh, backpacking or outdoor water filters, um, like the ones that I take hiking with me, uh, they are 0.2 micron filters, so they will filter out most of these things. Not viruses, but you know, there's not a ton of waterborne viruses that you have to worry about, at least in this region. To remove viruses, like in the lab, you need really small filters that have tiny pore sizes down to like 20 nanometers. Um, so uh, that is uh, an order of magnitude smaller than the, the ones for bacteria. Um, here's an example of a point, uh, 0.2 micron filter. Uh, this is a common syringe filter. So when we have to filter things um, to, for the lab, um, we put it into a syringe and you actually push it through this filter and it can um, be pulled through the filter. So here's some bacteria that have been caught by a filter medium. All right, so that's for liquids. There are things that can't be autoclaved and aren't liquid, so we have to have another way of sterilizing them. Irradiation is a common method for this. Um, this is not uh, like making them radioactive. Um, this is exposing them to high energy radiation like UV, gamma rays, x-rays, things like this. And these are super high levels. So like 7 million times the dose of a chest x-ray. Um, what this does is this will damage the genomes of microbes. And uh, so we can use this as a method to uh, destroy those microbes' genomes and their ability to, uh, to reproduce. The more DNA in an organism, the faster it gets killed. So uh, actually, we often irradiate many of our common uh, foods that are going to be stored, things like pork. Irradiation will kill trichinella parasites that are in the meat, but it doesn't really damage the meat. It doesn't change the flavor, things like this. Um, wheat flour gets irradiated to control mold. Um, Things like poultry to reduce bacterial numbers, um, shellfish, lettuce, spinach to help reduce bacterial numbers. This is very common um, for uh, leafy vegetables where it's really hard to wash them well because of all the crenellations and cracks and crevices in them. So this methodology um, is very effective for us, like in the lab, the, the plastic Petri dishes we get are uh, sterilized by irradiation. Uh, those Petri dishes come to us uh, irradiated, so they're completely sterile. When I take them out of the package, I know that uh, they have no bacteria in them. And that's useful for things that can't be autoclaved, like the plastic, which would melt in the autoclave. 
So these are a few ways uh, of physically uh, sterilizing or reducing microbial numbers. Autoclaves, high pressure, high heat to sterilize objects and liquids. Um, pasteurization reduces pathogen numbers. Um, it doesn't always sterilize. Refrigeration to prevent microbial growths um, in foods. Uh, keep that level low. Um, these two coupled together not only uh, prevent microbes from being in the things that we eat and drink, but they also preserve the length of time we can store these things, which is really important, right? Uh, keeping food fresh for longer is generally about reducing microbial growth. Filtration to remove cells from solutions. Um, and there's even air filters and things like this, um, but it's really hard to remove small viruses by filtration. And then using high energy radiation to damage the DNA of pathogens um, is one method, uh, particularly for things that cannot be autoclaved. All right, that's it for 13.2.